very privileged today to have with us Daphne Casey, who's had a long career with the UN Development Program. Uh, she's worked in Zambia, Angola, Ethiopia, Mozambique, and Malawi. She's now Chief of the United Nations Volunteers Office in New York, and she's going to speak today about how the UN works with indigenous people. I'm not going to break the public stand here. Yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, share with you. I'm afraid I'm, replaced, I'm replacing someone from the very exotic uh, place uh, in Sudan, Dolly, I think. And I know that she must have had some wonderful stories to tell you. I can't promise that talking about UN framework documents would be as exciting. <laughs> but I, I do hope that. Um, as I share how the UN sees itself as a valuable partner for working with indigenous peoples, you can maybe extrapolate a little bit about how we work in the Sudan. As mentioned, my name is Daphne uh, Casey, and I've been with the UN for quite a few years. I wish I could say that I've been working with indigenous people throughout my career, which is well over 20 years, but I haven't, not directly, but I certainly have been working with women and gender issues and I must uh, share with you as I listen to the stories here. The thing that, that really resonates across the years is um, the similarity of, of the experiences. But more importantly I think it's the strength of women and their resilience. And I think that that uh, really is, and as you begin to understand more about indigenous women, we see that uh, resilience as really being critical to helping them to um, overcome the challenges that they, they face on a day-to-day -day basis. And in, in many ways, that really is what is at the heart of how the UN uh, works with um, indigenous people as communities on their own and also within the, the countries. What I thought I, I would do, given that I only have uh, a few minutes and I'm sure you have lots of questions based on the stories you've heard, is I wanted, first of all, to share with those you who aren't familiar with us. I think in a way to bring a very positive message on behalf of the UN, which is that governments and the peoples uh, of the world, which sounds uh, maybe very large, they've really challenged the UN system and given it a particular responsibility to respond to um, the issues that the indigenous people are, are facing. And they've given us frameworks within which to, to work, and uh, as part of the accountability for that, they've also um, given us um, reporting responsibilities uh, to the General Assembly. So what I thought I would do is share a few of those uh, with you, and um, leave you some space also for asking uh, questions. And let me start by, first of all, putting on my glasses. But, um, Uh, yes, in, in the UN system, not uh, surprisingly, um, we started with the UN system uh, the, with the Charter. For those of, of you who are familiar with it, you know the same, we the peoples. And I think that uh, indigenous people for a long while probably wondered if we the peoples also included them. But as um, their voice became stronger, uh, in a way the Charter has given them also the framework within which to anchor uh, their demands of their uh, respective governments and the uh, global community. So we have the Charter as, if you will, the first overarching framework for um, situating the UN response to the demands of uh, ind indigenous people. But more recently, in uh, 1999, we had the, what you call the Millennium Summit, and I think that that's probably closer to home for most people, and at that time we had uh, about 147, maybe, yeah, just under 150 heads of state and governments who came together and signed off on that, um, I hope, well known Millennium Development, Millennium Development Goals. Those people, the eight Millennium Development Goals now, into nine. And then the overall goal was to try and have uh, poverty, extreme poverty, by the year 2015. And, um, that also is the second, if you will, framework document within which the UN is required to uh, work when it comes to their activities in support of indigenous uh, peoples. How have they activated 
this, as the UN, as you can see, huge family of varying agencies. You have the UN Development Program, you have the ILO, the International Labor Organization, and each of those um, are required to develop their own um, agency-wide program. But in order to operationalize the Millennium Development Goals, and, uh, and so we have a number of rather specific, if you will, um, policy framework documents. One of which is, uh, first we have the Charter, then we have the MDGs, and then we have the UN Declaration on Indigenous Peoples. And I brought some copies here. I suspect I don't have enough. But it's a resolution that was adopted by the, uh, by the UN. And uh, I'm, I'm sure I can give the reference to, to pick that up uh, for you. It's uh, Resolution 61295, and it's the UN Declaration on the Rights of um, Indigenous Peoples. And one of the recommendations from that was to set up a permanent forum at the UN uh, that would allow Indigenous people to be heard directly by the General Assembly. And they meet annually in May uh, at the UN.